Hey there, Facebook. And hey there, Periscope. Prophet David Taylor here with your weekly live prophetic word. Uh, excuse me, I have to set one other thing up. And there we go. <clears throat> so again, Prophet David Taylor here with your weekly week live uh, prophetic word. So excited, as always, about the word of God and so excited about being able to uh, bring it to you. So let's say a word of prayer and we will jump right in. Thank you, Father, for this day. Thank you for your mighty word. Thank you for your mighty spirit, O oh God. I come to you, O oh God, and I surrender. And I say, not my will, but thine be done, O oh Lord. Fill me with the Holy Ghost through my mouth. My, my teeth, my tongue, my lips, my hand gestures, my eyebrows, my eyes, fill every part of me, O oh God, with the Spirit of God. Speak through me, O oh God. Breathe through me, O oh God, that your message might come through, that you might be glorified in all things, that the word might be released, that you want released, O oh God, to edify the body of Christ and to crush the head of the devil, O oh God, so that we can walk in the victory that you already died to give us. And we thank you for it and we believe you for it. And I'm expecting you for great things, oh God, great miracles, not because of my goodness, but because of your goodness. Thank you for it and I believe you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, amen and amen. Now, the prophetic word for today um, is entitled, Make the Crooked Places Straight. Make the Crooked Places Straight. Okay, now... <clears throat> If you're old school, you heard a lot of songs, because they wrote a lot of songs back in the day, and they quoted the scripture a lot about making the crooked places straight. But uh, we're going to dive in today to see what the Holy Spirit is saying to us now, right now. Because remember, we're not just coming upon the end of a year, we're coming upon the end of a decade. We're not just coming upon the start of a new year, we're coming upon the start of a new decade. And every time this year, God has given out prophetic words giving out prophetic words to help us get ready for the new year. And this time it's also for a new decade. And everything that uh, I've heard so far is that 2020 is going to be a year of, year of vision. No, can't do that one right now. It's going to be a year of vision and be a year of walking in the vision, a year of clear vision, uh, uh, a year of accelerating the vision, a year of being sure that you're in the perfect will of God, that you don't waste any more time outside the will of God, that everything that you're doing for 2020 is what the Lord wants you to do. That's the season that we're in. That's where we're, that's the slot that we're in. So if you think about it, then why not take full advantage of what the Lord is offering? If the Lord is releasing all these prophetic words to help get us ready for the beginning of a new year, then why wouldn't we take advantage of that? That's the thing to do is to take advantage of what God says so we can be ready. Because you don't want to come upon the new year unawares and unprepared. Okay? So, that's not my message. I was just a little prep. Okay? So, again, the message today is make the crooked places straight. We're going to be reading from Isaiah. Isaiah is an Old Testament prophet. And uh, Isaiah is what is known as one of the major prophets. Now, you hear me say it all the time, but I'm going to repeat it here. Being a major prophet in the Bible, in the Old Testament, does not mean their message was more important. It just means that their books were longer. Isaiah and Jeremiah had very, very long books. They had a lot to say. When you have minor prophets like Haggai and Zephaniah, Zechariah, Habakkuk, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, they all had books that ran maybe two to four chapters. Okay, maybe two to four chapters. It does not mean it's any less the word of God, and it does not mean that the message is not important. All it means is that the books were smaller. So Isaiah um, got over 60 chapters in the book of Isaiah, so he's a major prophet. He had a lot to say. Jeremiah as well. Okay, so we're going to be reading out of Isaiah 45. Uh, I'm actually going to read verses 1, 2, and 3, but we're going to focus on verse 2. So Isaiah chapter 45, verses 1, 2, and 3. Okay. This is what the Lord says to, I'm reading out the Berean Study Bible. This is what the Lord says to Cyrus, his anointed, whose right hand I have grasped to subdue nations before him, to disarm kings, to open the doors before him so that the gates will not be shut. I will go before you and level the mountains. I will break down the gates of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. 
I will give you the treasures of darkness and the riches hidden in secret places, so that you may know that I am the Lord, the God of Israel, who calls you by name. Those verses are very familiar and they're action-packed. I want to again read verse 2 in a couple different translations. <clears throat> I want to read verse 2 in the New American Standard Bible. I will go before you and make the rough places smooth. I will shatter the doors of bronze and cut through their iron bars. King James Version, uh, New King James. I will go before you and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron. King James, I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut and sunder the bars of iron. Okay? So what I want to convey to you, what the Spirit of God was showing me is that, because we're going to deep dive into what the words actually say in Hebrew, but one of the things that, that you need to know going into your 2020 season Closing out this year and going into the new year, what you need to understand is that you need to allow God to make the rough places smooth and the crooked places straight in your soul and in your life. And what that means is that you cannot afford to go into 2020 carrying baggage from the past. Okay? Uh, I got a scar on an oven uh, a long time ago, and there that scar is right there. I still remember it because it was a potato oven. Okay, now you see how I can touch it because there's no pain because the scar is still there, but it's healed. So when I touch it, there's no pain because that scar is long healed, even though I, I got it a long time ago. Okay, I got it the year my son was born. Okay, now <clears throat> your soul works the same way. When you go through something in life, it leaves marks on your soul because you're not the same person after you come out of something, as you were before you went through it. But what you don't want to do is still be scarred and that, that space in your life and your soul still be so sensitive that when you touch it, it, it brings back the pain. And you cannot afford to go in your, into your 2020 season because when God begins to open doors, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute, when God begins to open doors and put you in new places and put you around new people, and give you some new stuff, you can't be having those arguments with ghosts. You can't be walking around. You know how sometimes we have those arguments where we're talking to ourselves and there's nobody in the room, and you're just as mad as if something just happened, as if it was fresh, and you're talking about stuff that's back in the past. You can't afford to go into your 2020 season carrying anything from your past. Okay? You can only go forward the way the Lord wants you to by releasing Everything in your soul and in your life that's not from God. One more time. You can only go forward into 2020 releasing everything in your soul and in your life that's not from God. And so when God says he's going to go before you and make the rough places smooth and make the crooked places straight, he's not just talking about the path that you walk on. He is talking about that. I'm going to get to that shortly. But he's also talking about the places in here. Because what the devil loves to do, the devil loves to scar you in your childhood and then wait until you get grown, put you in a position of power, and then aggravate the scar. Just do something, just needle you, just poke you. Just send a fiery dart right in that scar you've been carrying since you was little and just have you go all off and just mess up your testimony or mess up your ministry or offend a lot of people because the devil likes to wait until God has exalted you, until God has lifted you up, until God has made you an influencer, as they say, like they say on Instagram. Okay, remember, nothing is new to God because all this in Instagram influencer, God already knew how to make people influencers. Jesus was an influencer, okay? So the devil likes to wait until God has made you an influencer, and then he wants to aggravate that scar to make all that pain come back and to make you act a fool in public or on social media or someplace inappropriate because you never got the full healing that you need. So I'm talking about from mama, from daddy, from maybe you had a bad breakup. Maybe you had a brother or sister die. Maybe you were abused. That's a big one. If you were abused when you were a child, maybe somebody called you out of your name. Maybe somebody called you fat when you were, you were really young and you never got over it. Whatever it is that you've been carrying into your adult life, the Holy Spirit wants me to say 
that you're going to have to let God get in there and heal that and straighten that crookedness in your soul out so that as you go forward, you're not carrying that burden. That's extremely important because you don't want to be somewhere in a, in a setting and all of a sudden somebody says something or does something or you just have a flashback. Oh, I've been crying all morning in church. You just have a flashback and all of a sudden something comes back up out of your soul that, that takes you back to that, that bad experience you had as a child. Okay? So now let's uh, look at these verses. Let's get behind the language a little bit, do a little bit of exegesis and understand what the Lord is saying. Okay, he said in verse 1, sorry about that background noise. This is what the Lord says to Cyrus, his anointed, whose right hand I have grasped to subdue nations before him, to disarm kings, to open the doors before him so that the gates will not be shut. So the Lord says to Cyrus, his anointed, God is talking to King Cyrus, and he's the anointed one. He's the one that God has chosen to do certain things. What we're supposed to get out of that is what you're supposed to understand is that's talking to you. Okay, whatever it is that God has called you to do, he has anointed you to do. Now, for those of you that don't know what the anointing means, that's a very Christian-y word, and people use it a lot, but you may not know what it means. What that word anointing literally means coming out of both the Hebrew and the Greek, it means to rub or to smear with oil, with oil. So when it says you anoint, anoint something, that means you're rubbing it or you're smearing it with oil. So when God anoints you, what he actually does is he takes a part of himself. He rubs it in your spirit. And then that's why when you do something you're anointed to do, the power of God manifests. So when you hear somebody say, so-and-so is so anointed, there's such an anointed singer, or there's such an anointed preacher, or there's such an anointed athlete, or whatever it is you're anointed to do, that's because God took some of his self, his personal self, rubbed it in your spirit. Okay, rub the oil of the Holy Ghost in that area, in your spirit, and now when you do that thing that you were born and created to do, the power of God manifests. That's what people mean when they, they're talking about the anointing, and so and so, so anointed. That's what it means. So, when the Lord is saying to Cyrus, his anointed, that's talking to you. Okay, you're anointed by God to do something. And then uh, he says, whose right hand I have grasped. God said, I took hold of Cyrus's right hand. God says, I got you, Cyrus. I'm holding hands with you to subdue nations before him. So Cyrus was anointed to, to help bring some nations down, to bring some nations under, under control, to disarm kings. Wow, what a prophetic word. That, that just like Moses did with Pharaoh, to disarm the kings, that they can't do anything. Their security systems aren't going to be able to prevail against you. You're going to be able to break down their security protocols to open the doors before him so that the gates will not be shut. There's a verse in Revelation where the Lord says, I'm he that openeth and no man shutteth, and I'm he that shutteth and no man openeth. Then he says, I will go before you and level the mountains, or I will go before you and make the crooked places straight, or I will go before you and make the rough places smooth. Now let's look at what that says in the Hebrew. Okay, I, self-explanatory, the Lord is talking about himself, will go. That means to go, come, or walk. So what that means is that the Lord is saying to you, I'm going with you. I'm coming with you on this journey. I'm walking with you. You are not by yourself. That word is for somebody right now. You might be apprehensive. As you go into 2020, you might be apprehensive about closing out the year. You might be apprehensive about because you're not sure what's going to happen. The Lord is saying that I am going with you. I am coming with you. I am walking with you. You are not by yourself. Okay? And sometimes you need to meditate on that. Sometimes when you feel, amen, Charles, sometimes when you feel like you're by yourself, you're not. Because the Lord said, I'm coming with you, I'm going with you, and I'm walking with you. Okay? I will go before you. Now, the Hebrew there. That word means face. That's so important. The Lord said, I'm actually coming before your face. Do you understand what that means? What that means is that before you show up, now when you come on, please like and share, because you hear me say every week, when God has a prophetic word, it's designed to bless the body of Christ worldwide. So please invite people to this broadcast, and please like and share this video. God says, I'm, be go I'm going before your face. 
What that means is that before you walk into a room, before you walk into a situation, before you, may, let's say you're on a business trip in a town you've never been in before, before you get there, God said, I have gone before you. I'm in front of you. I have gone before your face. Very, very important because there's some verses where it talks about God is our rear guard. So God is standing behind us like you did because you heard me talk about that uh, last week, I think, or in the last two weeks, where he was a pillar of fire at night and a pillar of cloud by day. That was last week. Well, if God was that pillar of fire between the children of Israel and Pharaoh. He, he was their rear guard. That's what they call that. He had their back. But here he's saying, I'm going before your face. That means there is nothing that could come at you that don't have to face God first. Now, I'm just going to let that sink in. Doesn't matter what comes at you. Doesn't matter what the devil throws at you. It doesn't matter what life is offering you. When God says, I'm going before you, I'm going before your face. That means before you even see it, God said, I've already dealt with it. I've already seen it because God says it's got to come through me. Okay. I will go before your face. And the Berean study Bible says, I will level the mountains. I will make the rough places smooth. I will make the crooked places straight. Now that means a lot of things. Okay. Now, when it says to level the mountains, it says to be straight, even, to be right, pleasant, or prosperous. So when God says level the mountains, and the word mountain means to swell up, to favor, honor, be high, or proud. So let me read that again, okay? When God says, and level, coming out of the Hebrew, that word there, level, means to be straight, even, to be right, pleasant, or prosperous. When God says the mountains, that means to swell up, to favor, honor, be high, or be proud. When you put that together, do you understand what that means? What God is saying is that all of the straight places, or all of the honorable places, all of the proud places, all of the places that you want to go that helps you get blessed and lifted up, God is saying, I'm going to go before you and straighten them out and make them even, make them right, make them pleasant, and make them prosperous. That's what that means. That God says, I'm going to before. For example, let's say the enemy was setting a trap, or let's say somebody was going to offer you a bad business deal. The Lord is going to be with you. The Lord is going to give you insight. The Lord is going to give you favor. The Holy Spirit will give you a sense of peace or a sense of, like I call it, unpeace inside of your spirit to let you know when to sign a contract. He's going to go before you to straighten out. So all the mess that you might have to go through while you're pursuing your high places, while you're being lifted up, because he says the mountains, and that word mountains there, coming out of the Hebrew, means to swell up, to favor, to honor, to be high or proud. So what that means is that when, when you come to a high place, when you swell up, when the favor of God is upon you, when honor is upon you, God said, I will already have gone before you and straightened that place out and made it even and pleasant and prosperous. How do we know that's true? Because it's possible to get blessed, but you're still not prosper, uh, prosperous. Because the Bible says you need to prosper and have good success. That's in Joshua chapter 1, Joshua 1, 8. That you need to prosper and have good success. Because sometimes you can prosper, but it's not successful. You can have money, but you don't have peace. You can have fame, but you've messed up your reputation. You can have a nice house, but you ain't healthy. Okay, God is saying, I'm going to move all that stuff out the way. I'm going to straighten that out so that when it's time for the favor, when it's time for the high places, when it's time for the good pride, not the bad pride, when it's time for the good pride and the honor to be a part of your life, I will already have gone ahead of you and straighten that out to make it right. What a promise. And then he says, I will break down the gates of bronze. Okay, I will break down the gates of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. <clears throat> the gates there is translated something swinging, the valve of, or a door. Okay, now bronze means many things in the scripture, but many times what bronze represents is judgment. Okay, when you see the metal bronze being used in the Bible, it's most often used as a symbol of judgment. Okay? Uh, so what God is saying there is that if there's any swinging judgment or any kind of doors of judgment against you, I'm going to break them down. So that means if somebody's trying to bring a judgment against you, God said, I've already gone before your face and I'm going to break it down 
And then he says, I'm going to cut through the bars of iron. Now, the bars of iron, I'll tell you what that says in the Hebrew. The bars means a bolt, you know, like a dead bolt. And cut through means to fell a tree to destroy anything. So the English word says cut through, but the Hebrew word says God's going to chop it down like a tree, but he's going to destroy it completely. And the bars, a bolt of iron, okay? Now, normally in Scripture, iron represents uh, hindrances, or uh, they used to call them fetters. Those are chains. Clark, used to, Clark Sisters used to say, you brought the sunshine, he breaks every fetter. A fetter is a chain. So when it's talking about cutting through the bars of iron, it's talking about things that would chain you, things that would bind you, things that would hold you back from being who you are and doing what you're supposed to do. So God has said, I'm going to go before your face and make the prosperity work in your favor. I'm going to level out all that bad stuff, but I'm going to break down any type of judgment, any type of door of judgment against you, and I'm going to cut through the chains, the hindrances, okay? All of this is what God is going to do for us in 2020. Those of us that have been walking with the Lord, those of us that have been walking in faith, those of us that have been walking in obedience, those that has been that have been believing God for increase and prosperity and going to the next level, this is the word for you. This is the word to you. This is what God is going to do. Okay? And then um, I'll break down verse 3 another time. I want to stay focused on verse 2. That God says he's going to make those crooked places straight. He's going to go before your face. Cut down, destroy judgments against you, and be sure that he... Uh, cuts down like a tree or utterly destroys any type of bars, any type of hindrance, any type of prison. So now we need to tie that in to the thing I said at the top of the hour to understand that that's why you have to let the Lord make sure it's not just prisons on the outside. It's them prisons on the inside <laughs> that causes us the most problem. It's not chains out here. It's chains on the brain. Okay? So you got to be sure that you let the Lord in to do his perfect work, to be sure that you're not dragging anything with you. If you remember the story of uh, Ebenezer Scrooge, uh, Christmas Carol, Ebenezer Scrooge was a mean old man who was a miser, who was tight with his money, who didn't want to pay his employees, who didn't care about poor people, didn't care nothing about nothing but himself. Well, he had a vision one night and he got a visit from three ghosts, ghosts of Christmas past, ghosts of Christmas present, and ghosts of Christmas future. Before the Christmas ghost showed up, he got a visit from his partner, Jacob Marley. And Jacob Marley was his partner in life, but he had already died and he came back as a ghost. When Jacob Marley came back and visited Ebenezer, what did Jacob Marley have on him? He had on him chains and he said he was cursed to wander in the afterlife, carrying all of his sins with him. In other words, all the wrong stuff Jacob Marley did while he lived. He was cursed to carry all that with him for all eternity, and that's why he had all them chains. So he was trying to appear to Ebenezer to let him know, you better get them chains off you before you die. You better not keep living like you're living, because it's going to follow you after you die. That's what Jacob Marley was trying to help Ebenezer, and then he got the visit from the three gross. So what God is saying is that any type of chains that you're carrying from your childhood, from your past, from anything that's gone on before, God wants to get in and free you because you cannot afford to bring them chains with you forward into 2020. And then he's going to go before your face, level the mountains, uh, make the crooked places straight, uh, cut down the gates of bronze and cut through the bars of gates of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. What a word. What an exciting word. And I'm so glad that this is November. This is November 3rd. But God is getting us ready to close this year out and get ready for 2020. Uh, now, every year I give what I call a prophetic locator word. And a locator word is where I ask the Lord to show us where we are in the spirit and show us where he is. Because also at the end of the year, you need to get your grades from Jesus. You need to be sure that when every year ends, sometime in December, you ask the Lord, how did I do this year? Did I do what you wanted me to do this year? Did I spend my time in your perfect will? If I didn't spend your, my time in your perfect will, oh God, don't let me live one more year. Don't let me live one more day while I'm outside of your perfect will. Show me where I missed it. Show me what you're pleased with. Show me what you're not pleased with and help me get on track. I know that's a rough prayer to pray, 
the better that you get your grades and your judgment from the Lord now, uh, as opposed to waiting until you are through living. And once you are through living and you stand before in judgment, you don't get any more chances then. Your life has been written. The pages of the book of your life are written and the book is finished. You don't get another shot after you die. So every year I give a prophetic locator word so that we can hear from the Lord, so we can be sure we're in sync with the head of the church, Jesus Christ, before moving forward, and also so we can get our grades for Jesus. Now, I do this for me, too, because I tell you every week, there's nothing that I'm telling you to do that I'm not doing. So we can get our grades from the Lord at the end of the year so we can hear, what did I do right? Where did I miss it? What do I need to tighten up? What do I need to let go? And with this prophetic word today, then that means it's imperative that we're not carrying in any of those chains as we go forward. All right? All right. So if you have any prayer requests, put the prayer requests on the screen, and I'll pray for you. Um, when you see me close my eyes and pray in tongues, I'm asking the Lord for, is there any physical healing? Uh, is there any financial prophetic words? Or is there any deliverance? Any demons that need to be cast, be cast out? And is there any more rhema word, any more things that the Holy Spirit wants to breathe. If you got a prayer request, put it on the screen now, and I'm going to talk to the Holy Ghost and see what else he wants to release. Okay. All right, the Holy Spirit just gave me a color. And you know what that color was? That color was green. And it's, it's pine green. It's also money green. Do you know what that means? That means several things. It means that God is releasing uh, a season of lushness, a season of when something is evergreen, that means it's always fresh. So God is releasing a season of perpetual freshness on us. That means you need to start looking for things in your life that are always going to be fresh and evergreen. It means that it's one of the signs that the plants are alive when they have that nice, rich green color. Because we know that when plants are yellow, and we know that when plants are brown, they're dead or dying, and they need to be pruned. But that's not the color I saw. I saw green. So that means God is releasing life. Because remember, he's the vine with the branches. So that means the head of the church, Jesus Christ, the vine, is releasing evergreen things, things that are always going to be fresh. And he's releasing that nice chlorophyll green to indicate a richness of life. But it also means money. It also means that God is releasing a, a treasure trove of wealth, of finances, of money to us right now. That's what happens when the Spirit of God gives you a color. Uh, to prophesy through, and that's the color I just saw in the Spirit. Wow. So I'm going to say it again. I say it all the time, but I'm going to say it again. Don't just talk about the trials of being a Christian. Talk about the benefits of being a Christian. Don't just talk about the, the stuff you go through. Talk about the benefit of having the prophetic word in your life. And the Lord just told us that the color is green. Wow. <clears throat> That gives me confidence and encouragement to finish out 2019, and that gives me anticipation for, amen, Naomi Smith said amen, that gives me anticipation for 2020, because I'm going to be walking in greenness, I'm going to be walking in evergreen stuff, continual freshness, I'm going to be walking in the life-giving chlorophyll from the vine, because it wasn't yellow or brown, it was green, and I'm going to be walking in more money, more finances. Amen, I'll take it. And for those of you... Uh, Naomi wants to receive a prophetic word. Okay. All right. And for those of you that have received that, receive that, grab that. Don't let the devil take it from you. Bury it in your heart. Okay. I want to give Naomi Smith a prophetic word. Okay. Naomi, God says to you, you already know what to do, daughter. You already know. I've already spoken to you. You can already hear from me. I need you to believe me. I need you to be confident. I need you to do what I'm telling you to do. You already know what to do, okay? And I will confirm as you go my word. I will give you a witness from my spirit to your spirit, but you already know. So obey me, believe me, do what I've already told you to do, and the door will open just like that, says the spirit of the living God. That's for Naomi Smith. 
Amen and amen. Okay, let me ask the Holy Ghost if he has anything else before I sign off. Okay, I don't think I'm hearing anything. Now, so I want to remind you, <clears throat> I want to remind you, oh, I got my backpack all the way over here. I want to remind you about my Christmas books. My Christmas books have turned out to be a blessing um, in a way that I hadn't imagined because I've already had mothers and grandmothers come up to me and say that they wish they had seen books like this sooner because believers need to be learning about the Christian stuff and not just the secular stuff. So the green book is the more traditional one where we're talking about Santa and presents and gingerbread men, so that's more the traditional. But the red book is my alphabet is Christmas Christian version, where I actually talk about the history of the things that were surrounding Jesus' birth and where I actually give you scripture. We talk about what frankincense is, what myrrh is, things like that, okay? So remember, my books are out. You can get them on Amazon. They're available right now in both print copies, like I just showed you, or in ebook copy. So you can get them on Amazon right now, okay? All right, I've got a lot more stuff coming up uh, for 2020. A uh, whole bunch of stuff. I won't tell you about that yet. I want to uh, stay focused on the Christmas stuff. But I also put that up there to let you know that I'm doing what I'm saying. I'm not just running my mouth. I'm not just wah, 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 wah. I'm actually living my dream. I'm actually producing some things. And I say that to encourage you because if God did it for me, he'll do it for you. All right? Amen and amen. All right? Well, thank you for tuning in live. Please remember to like and share the video as many places as you can because we want the prophet, prophetic word of God to be a blessing to as many people as possible. Okay? All right. My pastor blessed my heart this morning because he said he got a book in Walmart called Prayers That Route Demons. He got that in Walmart. Okay, not a Christian bookstore, in Walmart. And he said that took his book sales to a whole new level. And he said, who would have thought that a book named Prayers That Route Demons could be in Walmart? But it was. Okay, so what does that tell me? That tells me that the world is hungry for the truth of God. The world is hungry for the prophetic word. Not just believers, but unbelievers. They want to hear from God too. Okay, and I'm, I'm happy to be a part of that program. I'm happy to be a part of his kingdom. Okay? All right. God bless you. Thanks to you. Uh, for those of you that watch me live, um, I will be here on uh, this Thursday. Uh, this Thursday. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Not this Thursday. Thursday after next because uh, November came in on a Friday. So this Thursday coming up is the first Thursday. I'll be here on the second Thursday with my next installment of No More Genies, and I'll be here next Sunday for uh, the live prophetic word at 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, Facebook Live, Periscope, and YouTube. Okay? Thank you. God bless. Have a good rest of your Sunday. And remember, God wants to make the crooked places straight. Amen and amen.